First up, we have Mark McElroy. Welcome, Mark, to PitchCon. Hi, Nick. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, Mark McElroy is a writer over at PitcherList who has written a variety of pieces focusing on topics like what the draft room tells us to going deep pieces on guys like Nomar Mazzara and, of course, an introduction to Adenu. You can find Mark on Twitter at Mark McElroy BB. How you doing? I'm great. How are you? Uh, not too bad. Are you tired? Uh, uh, yes, but that's okay. I have a long time to sleep after this. Okay. Uh, so up next, of course, is Niv. Niv, welcome, man. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Really happy to be here. Oh, I love the shirt. Um, <laughs> uh, Niv Shah is the founder and developer of Adenu, which, to quote Trey Ball's wonderful 2016 Rotographs piece, is a smarter, better brand of fantasy baseball. The site has, is made all the better by Nib's constant innovations. Don't want to say too much as Mark is about to fill you in on all of it. So you can follow Nib on Twitter at Nibshaw. I've been playing Adenu as well with the Fangraph staff. It's fantastic. That's I am awesome. so excited about this panel, and I know there are more people to introduce as well. I'll let you guys handle that and get out of your hair now. All right, Mark, I'll let you take it. Yeah, sure. Um, I guess Nick's going to add uh, Chad Young. Uh, Chad's moved from journalism to sports marketing and product management over the last 16 years, spent most of his time on fantasy baseball. Um, in addition to helping create Audenew, he is a fantasy writer at Fangraphs and has written about his beloved uh, Cleveland Indians at letsgotribe.com. He had plans of getting back into writing this season and hopes that there will be another one. Uh, in 2020, uh, Don't we he lives in Seattle with his wife and his two kids and his dog, his two dogs. Sorry, two dogs. <laughs> How are you doing, Chad? Good. How about you? Awesome. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, we also have uh, Justin Vibber. He's been playing fantasy baseball for almost 30 years. Is exclusively auto new for the last nine years. He uh, was an auto new contributor at Rotographs. And Justin is the creator of the Autonew Surplus Calculator and host of the Autobot podcast. He is a lifelong Cubs fan and lives in Rochester, New York with his wife and two children. Hello. How are you doing, Justin? Good. Thanks for having me, Mark. Uh, that's great. Thanks for being here. Um, now, most of you probably don't know who I am, so I'm just going to briefly take this uh, free opportunity to introduce myself. Um, I was introduced to fantasy baseball in 2013 by a coworker. Um, he invited me to join his league and I got hooked. Um, it reminded me of playing uh, with my baseball cards when I was a kid, watching baseball with my mom. So I uh, got into baseball again after a brief hiatus, but uh, I'm totally hooked. I have a job that allows me to listen to podcasts all day. So I listen to a lot of podcasts, which is awesome. And uh, one of those podcasts happened to be the TGFBI podcast with Justin Mason. And he was interviewing people in the uh, community about um, how they got in and how they got started. And uh, it really shocked me that most of the people who I was listening to were just people like me. They were baseball fans. They loved, loved the game and they loved talking about the game. So I... At that time, Todd Zola was looking for writers to take over um, at uh, Creative Sports 2. Uh, Laura, Mark, M Laura Michaels had just died, and Todd wanted to um, keep his legacy going about introducing new writers and giving them a chance. So he took a chance on me, and I worked at uh, Creative Sports for a couple of, uh, about six months or so before I got uh, hired on at uh, Pitcher List. So I've been working at uh, PL since the beginning of July, Nick, I think, something like that. Um, and uh, while I was over there, I in the off-season, I was thinking about what I should do for uh, uh, columns and things that I should um, put on the site. And one of them was uh, an Audenu. I'd heard about it um, on a lot of my podcasts. Eno talks about it a lot, especially when he was on the Sleeper and the Bust. And I thought, well, uh, let's give it a shot. There's no Audenu on Pitcher List. I want to learn how to do it. I'm sure there are lots of other people who do want to learn how to play. And so I thought, let's let's give it a shot. So I got 12 writers or 11 other writers at Pitcher List, and we uh, started our own league. So we're learning the game. We're trying to figure it out. And now's my chance to interview you guys, pick your brains, and get all the answers. So uh, I wanted to ask you, Nick, uh, Niv, when we started, uh, just to start, um, when did you start playing fantasy? 
and what was it like and what prompted you to think about other options? Yeah, um, so I started playing fantasy baseball in high school with uh, Chad, among other people. And uh, we grew up in Cleveland and both big Indians fans and Indians were really good in the late 90s. And, you know, we we're really following baseball pretty closely um, as best we could. And so we played sort of in a traditional five by five um, season long game, which is, I think, how most people started out in that, especially in that time. Um, like the variety of games has changed a lot since then, since the late 90s, early aughts. Um, and, you know, we, we played with our high school friends, college friends, sort of the same way that I think a lot of people who are here at PitchCon, like wa watching this right now or have participated so far, started out. Um, it was a great way to learn about baseball players. What you said about baseball cards is like a really, that sounds totally right to me. Um, you get to like engage with players that you don't normally get to see on TV or you don't normally think about. And you get to... Um, you get to just, you know, be competitive with some friends, which is obviously uh, always really fun. So um, I think, you know, I mean, the way I tell the story is uh, we read me and my high school friends, Chad, one of them, uh, a friend of ours named Jeff, and a bunch of my college friends, my roommates and stuff. We all read Moneyball uh, right when it came out um, together, basically. Like everyone picked it up. Everyone happened to read it um, when it was brand new. And we immediately were like, what? are we doing with fantasy baseball? Like our fantasy baseball games aren't aligning with what, um, what is being documented in this book. Like what kinds of trades are being made, what, what the dynamics are of uh, how you think about building a team over many years. Obviously like player development is a huge part of baseball um, and, and sort of uh, thinking more than just the immediate term. And it also, you know, the trades just weren't, as fun for us uh, after we really wrapped our head around what like the late nineties Indians teams that we followed did uh, wrapped our head around what we were seeing in Moneyball. Um, you know, one of our, like when we were in high school, like we, the Indians traded for, or maybe it was like beginning of college, the Indians traded for Grady Sizemore and Brandon Phillips and Cliff Lee and like one trade. And, and like that kind of dynamic, that kind of like, taking a bet on the future versus trying to push for a win right now didn't exist in our, in our Yahoo five by five leagues that were season long. So we started thinking about, you know, what, what is out there in terms of um, salary based auction based what's out there in terms of keepers and dynasty and everything seemed a little too limited, like a little bit short of the full vision. Um, you could keep X number of players, but you couldn't keep your whole roster or you'd have to like, um, have a free agent budget and and in a, in season like an auction budget that you started the season with, and those budgets were like separate, and you end up with like ninety nine dollar bids in the middle of the year for a closer, that like just didn't make sense in terms of like a coherent valuation system, and then you know the last thing is that um, is that we didn't ever find a service that would have deep enough rosters to allow us to keep some prospects around and have a little bit of depth to our teams. So, you know, all that stuff sort of combined with like the fact that we were playing a lot of video games at the time, like we were playing um, high heat baseball, which is maybe a game that some of you have played before. Um, we played uh, NCAA football dynasties. We would play, you know, franchise modes wherever we could find them, try to pass them around, try to like continue that kind of dynamic, team building, deep rosters, all that good stuff. And we were like, well, we can find this in fantasy, I think. so. Um, it started out as like me and, and these friends that I was talking about, like, we're like, well, what if we made a money ball ish fantasy game and auto news sort of sprung out of that. That's, that's awesome. I, I, it's so impressive that you were playing, you found it lacking. And then instead of just giving up or saying, forget it or planning, you actually did something about it. You tried yeah. to. I mean, I, I see the problem and then fix it. I suppress that instinct a little bit now in terms of like trying to build things totally from scratch when like, but when we were like in the early aughts, like when we, our first year, I think was 2005. Um, we like, that was a pretty long time ago. And there were a lot, I mean, there just wasn't anything that we could even piecemeal together. We tried piecemealing the first couple of years 
And, um, you know, I happen to be a developer as a background, so um, I really wanted to grow that skill set and learn more about how to do that. So it just worked out that, you know, we had the right number of creative people and the right number of interesting and figuring out the problem. And then also I was able to build a lot of the stuff. Yeah, so I think Niv, nice. Niv is, Niv's selling himself short a little bit here. I mean, we had that, that first year we wanted to do, one of the big things for us was 40 man rosters, right? Baseball's yeah. 40 man rosters. We should do that. We couldn't find a fantasy platform that supported it. And when the rest of us were like, all right, well, Yahoo Max is out at 30. Let's do a 30 man roster instead. Niv was like, no, 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 no. I can build a website that will hold 40 <laughs> people on it. And we're like, all right, yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was just, it was a great chance for me to uh, use those skills um, that, you know, I was, just out of college and I really liked programming. I still really like programming. So it was a nice chance to get to do that stuff. But, um, you know, the part, like it just, it just made a lot more sense to totally try to build something. And luckily like it's caught on a lot of people are interested in it and, uh, it's continuing to grow and improve, I think. So, um, but yeah, there was definitely an initial urge of like, we can't find a place to do 40 man rosters. 10 people would be like, yeah, okay, we'll figure out something. And I'd be like, no, 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 we're going to, we're going to build something from scratch. We're going to just, we're going to tear this thing down and start over because, uh, because why not? Because why, yeah. like, just why not? Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, so Chad, yeah, you jumped in there. Uh, what was your role when you, when Odd New got going? I, I, you know, I was talking to Niv about this the other day, and I, I said I was the third wheel of Otter New in the early days. Um, Niv, Niv was really the, you know, he built it. Um, our friend Jeff, uh, another high school friend of ours who we mentioned before, is like, as Niv was saying, we were all just out of college at the time. Jeff was an economics major. He was working for the Federal Reserve, and he was like really into the money ball, the economics of baseball. And so he was designing this economic system that, that sort of underpins what Otter New is today. Um, and I was, you know, a baseball fan. These are two of my best friends. I was sort of involved in it. And um, I, I spent a lot of time, uh, I spent a lot of time in those early years breaking things. Uh, we'd be like, oh, we're going to do auctions. We have no way to manage in-season auctions. So we're going to send out an email when you want to nominate someone. And everyone has 48 hours to reply. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to wait till 47 hours, <laughs> 59 minutes and 59 seconds. And I'm going to you know, snipe a bit at the end. I think, I think it was, uh, the last panel was ending talking about Cole Hamels. It was I think Cole, Cole Hamels, Hamels was the first one that Jeff nominated him for like a dollar. And just before it ended, I wrote back and was like, okay, two. <laughs> Everyone was like, but now we don't have time to bid you up. And I was like, yes. And Niv was like, <laughs> I'm not letting Chad keep breaking things. I'm building an auction system. And yeah, so that the, was... the way this got built over time was, you know, Nobody can do 40 man rosters. Niv builds a site to manage our rosters. Nobody can handle our in season auctions. Niv builds auction functionality. Um, and so we kept layering these things on. And, and my big role was break stuff, <laughs> show where it doesn't work and where we need kept, something better. Kept finding me new pages that I had to build to make sure that Chad <laughs> couldn't break the league. <laughs> I think good, good, good innovations need the uh, disruptors. For sure. <laughs> uh, and, and Justin. Um, it doesn't take very long when you join the Auto New community to uh, come across uh, Justin Viver. Um, how did you get involved? When did you start? And uh, what was that whole process like? Yeah, I mean, I started playing Auto New in the second year that it was released publicly in 2012. Um, I must have come across it on on Fangraphs. I had already been playing in uh, auction keeper leagues, so the format was something I was used to, at least in that sense, and having an auction and having a keeper league. Um, but it was deeper rosters. It was linear weights focused. And that appealed to me quite a bit. Um, so I, I dove in, started with one league. I, I, I've since grown to 10, 12 leagues some years um, because it was it was addicting. It was it, I loved being able to take over a team that was maybe abandoned and I could do a rebuild. Um, and I got really into playing the game at one point. Um, a guy by the name of Joe Douglas and Trey Bond as well. They started a Champions League, and I had I had won a league the year before and got invited into this Champions League. Um, getting invited to that league, the three of us then started doing a lot of auto new blogging, creating some tools, um, and then that led into eventually starting to write for Rotographs auto new specific content. Um, and we did that for a while, and Trey's still writing there periodically. Um, and, and that was really the progression that 
I've been playing fantasy baseball since middle school. I, we used to do pen and paper tracking the stats with baseball weekly. Um, you know, that's, I was running leagues because it was, I was a sports fan, but I was also, you know, a, 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 there's, there's an intersection of sports fans and nerds. And that, that was, that was my niche. I was, I was down for that. I was running those leagues. Um, and, and that's really now that's, this is like the grown up version of that. Right. <laughs> so uh, that, that's, that's a lot of, and, and yeah, now I exclusively play on new. And a lot of that is just because I, I find the format compelling. I find the community and the way that the, the game works to be very compelling. I never went back to playing in Yahoo leagues or, or CBS leagues or anything like that. Um, and that's a testament to the quality of, of the platform in my opinion. So, yeah, well, that's a perfect opportunity to um, start getting into the intricacies of the game. Um, what makes auto new different from other, other games um, and why, uh, what are some of your critiques of traditional fantasy baseball and how does Odd New solve them? And what makes it the best game you've never heard of? I think I can I can start with this and yeah. talk a little bit about sort of where we were where we were coming from at the, the beginning, which was and, and Niv, you know, talked a lot about this, but early on, like we won 40 man rosters because baseball teams have 40 man rosters and fantasy teams should too. It was sort of our thought, and we couldn't find it. And um we wanted, you know, there were you've got dynasty leagues where it's like, keep whoever you want for as long as you want. And you've got keeper leagues that are, you know, keep a couple players at a certain price, but real baseball is in between those things, right? Real baseball is everybody's got a price. And if you want to pay it, you can pay it. And it, you know, once you sign someone to a contract, they're yours. And then when their contract's up, you got to outpay other people. Um, and so we are like, all right, well, how do we, how do we get close to that? How do we get to a situation where, yeah, you can keep whoever you want, but your budget, is going to constrain you and you know every year guys get more expensive and if you want to keep them you got to figure out how to fit them in you got to figure out who's going somewhere and um so we, the, uh, i think you know i mentioned jeff building this economic system the, the the economics of the game i think are a big part of what makes it different it's it's you have to answer different questions and think about things in a different way um the way you make trades are not just about is this player good is this player better does it help me get you know more runs or more whatever i need um you have to think about what's the price on this player is this a value i'm happy with am i okay spending this much of my budget on this guy um what is it going to mean next year if i give up this you know younger cheaper player for an older more expensive player and january comes around and i've got to make my cuts in january and figure out who's sticking around for the next year um, and so it was, it was really like, to me, that's the biggest, the biggest differences is like, I feel like I have to think more like a real GM than I do in any of my other leagues. That's great. Yeah. So I'll add on to that just briefly, because, um, I think everything Chad said is correct. But the other, other thing to note about it is that there are games where you have to deal with real salaries that have like millions of dollars and, um, lots of nuance and to the contract, like bonuses and opt-outs and all that kind of stuff. And one of the things that's really great about Auto New is that while there are these kinds of complicated questions that Chad raises, like the kind of second level, third level thinking you have to make when building your team, it's still like straightforward numbers to deal with. Like no one costs more than 80 bucks. Uh, you know, the numbers are something that you can grok like really quickly by taking a glance. Like you have a $400 budget, 40 man rosters. Like I think you know most people who aren't familiar with uh, with Auto New specifically can sort of understand why Mike Trout would be eighty dollars in that format, and why like um, why like a prospect or someone else could be like anywhere from ten dollars to two dollars, depending on how close they are. So I think it's really approachable, um, which is not necessarily like the most intuitive thing. Like it, it is more intuitive and a little bit more approachable than you'd think but you still get to have like a complex uh, questions to, to answer and to grapple with while you're playing the game, which is, I think where the fun comes from, like it, it really does. And uh, just to piggyback on what Justin was saying earlier about the people he worked with, like you mentioned Trey still works uh, rotographs and Justin obviously is surplus calculator and doing great stuff for the auto new community, but Joe works for the pirates now. And a lot of players have actually graduated from auto new to major league clubs, which is, um, something I'm really proud of personally, and also just like the coolest thing. Like there are a lot of people that like, they're like, you know, it's not because of auto new, but it's, it shows the kind of thinking that you want to bring that you then become a natural fit for a baseball team like that. That's nuts to me. That's like, that, that really speaks volumes in my mind. 
Yeah. Just to, just to add one other quick thing um, that, that for me, and I think a lot of other people that play auto new that they really enjoy as well is that, that full year engagement that it's, you, you have all that off season, off season trading, the, the decisions that you make with, with arbitration. Um, and, and even in the middle of a year, if you're not competing, you, because it's a dynasty format, because it's a dynasty light format, you're always, you still have the ability to go out there and you're making trades for your future and not just for this year where, you know, in a traditional league, if it's not a dynasty or not any sort of keeper league, you get a lot of engagement issues at the end of the year. Um, auto new, it's a little less of that because you always have that opportunity to rebuild. And, and, you know, even the July after the draft, those prospects that just got signed just got drafted and signed by major league teams, they're added to the player pool. So you can now start auctions for those players, um, which, which adds a little injection of, of uh, activity in the middle of the year, which is, which is really neat as well. Yeah. We're able to add players really quickly. I mean, we, I'm able to add players really quickly. So, um, it makes it, uh, you know, it keeps action going. Like the draft is a, a huge, uh, sort of collective moment for the community and across auto new because a lot of players get signed and you know those guys go to the top of prospect boards right away so that's either value you can trade or value you can hold and hope to turn into a superstar and that's i mean that's awesome and then uh you know when players get posted or come over from uh japan or korea whatever uh we're able to add those guys really quick so there's always something going on and even if you're in 11th place uh, you have things to think about except um, except for like maybe a month out of the entire year, which is which is like a fun way to engage with baseball, frankly. And again, speaks to the money ball. Like that book doesn't start in March and end in September, right? Like that the the business of running a baseball team is a year round thing. So that was something that we really were excited about. And, you know, you can't really recreate that uh, anywhere else. Oh, that's that's totally true. I uh it's really important for me living in Canada where it's cold and we have a long winter uh, to have that baseball um, escape. So um, I'm looking forward to that this winter. Um, we have a, our pitcher list league is a standard uh, five by five roto. Um, what game types are involved in uh, Aut new and uh, which is your preferred uh, format? So preferred format is going to be a good one because I think all three of us disagree on that. But uh, just real quick as an overview, uh, five by five, really standard set of stats. Uh, nothing has been mo modified off sort of the standard package there, batting average and um, RBI and sa saves, all the good stuff, stolen bases. Um, when we started Auto New, one of the big things we wanted is to be a little bit more saber sabermetrically mo minded about what kind of scoring we had. Um, so the first year in our first league, uh, when we started out was a four by four and we still are four by four, which is on base slugging home runs runs. And, uh, on the pitching side, it's strikeouts, uh, home runs per nine, uh, whip and ERA. So a little bit more focused on like a, a pure saber metric, uh, implementation. And then, uh, we have two points formats, uh, one that has hits allowed, uh, for pitchers and one that doesn't um, as a negative stat. And then we have two head-to-head uh, -head formats that use both the four points formats. So you can play in a points league season long. You can play a points league uh, in a head-to-head, -head, or you can play in a 4x4 or 5x5 roto. Um, my preference remains the 4x4. I think it's a great format. I think um, roto is really uh, – roto. I, I prefer roto to points generally. Um, I know I'm not – necessarily in the majority on this panel with that. But I think that um, Roto gives you a little bit more, uh, gives you a few more paths towards victory. Um, points tends to be a little bit linear, I guess. But um, points do a great job of recreating a player's true performance in like a, I think, in a complete way. Um, Justin, what do you think about, like, uh, you, you've played pretty much every format. I know both you, Chad yeah. and Justin, have played every format, so... Yeah, and and I started out with uh, the saber points format. Um, I, I think that's probably my favorite. It, it, it's not the one that I currently play in now, mostly because like a teacher, I want to limit my prep. So right now, currently, I tend to only play the Fangrass points uh, formats because they are the most popular. Um, but Chad is starting a new league, actually. That's going to be a four by four, and I'm excited to to get back into that format. I've only played that once. Um, I, I, I like the points formats mostly because they are linear weights based. I know four by four is as well. Um, 
and and really those I think any of those three would be my preference. Um, Roto leagues, I, I mean, I've played those before. I just don't find them as compelling. Um, that's a perf- personal preference. I mean, I think it's awesome that that there's still that opportunity for people that are maybe new to Audinu but are familiar with five by five and they don't want to learn everything new at once. That they can they can play in a five by five league on Audinu and learn the format and then decide if they want to expand out into some of the other scorings. So. Yeah, that's that's why we chose five by five. We we thought, okay, we're learning something new. Let's try to keep it as close to what we have experience with um, before we dive right. and, into something. And as you play, like if you do decide that you would like to try out a head to head points after after easing in with the five by five, you can change it in the off season. You can always like uh, evolve your league however you want to. Um, but you know, the five by five is there so that it can be sort of a beginner league or a entry entryway into the entire like financial model and everything. Yeah. Um, just close this. Uh, yeah, that's, um, that's something that we'll probably end up doing. Um, oh, here's the, uh, Nick's put on the, uh, shared screen with the, uh, yeah, you can see the options people. here. Yeah. So, I mean, this, this four by four was the sort of the original format. You can see the scoring categories there. Old school five by five is exactly what it is. Um, and there's these two different points, league saber points and Fangraphs points. And you can see here the, the point values um, that we use to, to create the scoring. That's great. Um, one of the things that uh, I find really interesting about Odd New is the is the community that's involved. Um, it seems really grassroots to me that uh, you can, when you go onto the forums, you're talking to the creator. Um, what, uh, what is that? How's the community helped shape the game, Niv? Well, the community is obviously the most important thing. Um, it's, it defines like the game, I think. Uh, it's, it's a great self-selecting group. Um, everyone is incredibly smart. Uh, a lot of really in- interesting, intelligent players. Because of the way Auto New is set up, there are a ton of different ways to compete and to win, and strategies you can use. So you don't have to have like a hive mind. Everyone has to think the same exact way. Um, and so there's a lot of creative strategies out there that like the community is um, working on and always discussing. So it's a really lively community. There's like. 500-ish people in a Slack um, that's 24-7 all, all, all year, uh, full of energy. There's a community forums that I can respond to very quickly and help fix issues, help people with any problems they run into, um, answer questions, uh, talk about strategy. And uh, one of the more important things in our community is that we have a wish list. And the wish list uh, is... Uh, a forum and also sometimes in Slack where you can suggest change and uh, see it implemented on the site if it if it makes sense for the most for most people. Um, it's one of the benefits of having me do everything is that um, I can think about uh, suggestions. A lot of times there are suggestions that come through that I just hadn't considered yet but turn out to be excellent. Um, they can be as little as like just changing the way something's aligned on a page or how something looks but one of the biggest ones, and I think um, one of the, it's a huge differentiator for Auto New, and I think uh, something that that more leagues should use really is our arbitration system, and that came from the community. So our original um, game, you know, you don't want to be able to let people keep players forever. Uh, if you get a very inexpensive player and you can keep them forever, uh, your team just has a huge amount of value uh, baked in every year, and it becomes hard for other teams to catch up. And um, we approached that in uh, in the original league with a vote-off system that allowed people to uh, basically create hometown discount contracts for players that were really highly underpriced. And the community came up with a great solution to that, which is just an arbitration system every year. Every team gets a set amount of money, they can allocate it across all the other teams in their league. Um, everyone has to take a little bit of money, but nobody has to take the bulk of it unless you know you have a really great value. And um, it causes salaries to grow in a way that is extremely manageable, but also uh, you have to make tough choices. You, have, you can't just uh, 
hope to hit on a prospect and then uh, win your league for the next five years. You have to continuously evolve your team. And and, I think I've got to pull it up right now. Uh, this is Juan Soto's player page in the original league. Um, and it really shows us an action where I Freeport Pretzels is my team. I acquired Soto, you know, January 2018. So before he broke out, before he was in the majors um, at $2. Uh, that offseason, he went up by two more dollars, which is sort of the standard for anyone who is a major league player. But he obviously broke out in 2018 and was much more than a $4 player. And so when the other teams in our league were allocating their arbitration dollars, he got hit with another $20 in, in arbitration, which meant that when I entered the 2019 season, um, he was $26, I guess. Um, and then in the next off season, he again went up $2 uh, and again got hit with arbitration. And so what I ended up getting was I had a $2 Soto for a year. I've got a mid 20 Soto for a year. And now I've got a $38 Soto. Um, this off season, he'll probably go up to, he'll go up to 40 for the natural increase. And we'll see, maybe people still keep hitting him with arbitration. If he's, you know, if he's a $60 player, he'll get bumped up pretty close to that 60 by the end of the, by the end of this arbitration. And so what I've gotten is I got the benefit of, of acquiring Soto pre breakout, um, but it wasn't now I've got a $2 Soto and in 10 years, I'm gonna have a $20 Soto and he's still going to be way underpriced. Right. Um, or or you lose a, a draft pick or, or yeah. you lose a draft pick or like the way other leagues manage that kind of thing. Like this is, I think a more like financially like consistent way of considering it. And, you know, like again, like the, I raised it because like it came out of the community and um Jeff is still somewhere really unhappy that he didn't come up with the arbitration ideas himself. But, um, you know, the community comes is, I mean, it's really smart. It's a smart group of people. A lot of them have gone on to real baseball jobs. Um, and a lot of them, you know, take the game very seriously. And, you know, Justin is exactly an example of that with the surplus calculator and the tools that he's built to help uh, players compete and win in difficult auto new leagues. I think, um, yeah, it's just a great community and uh, everyone's really friendly and they have great ideas and you can learn a lot about how to play auto new from them. And then you'll see the site continuously evolve and improve um, because of the feedback that they give. And that's that's something I'm really happy with and I think makes auto new a really special game to play. Yeah, well, I, I have to say that this uh, Soto example, it's one of those things where if you've ever been in a fantasy league that that with keepers and you love a player like and if you don't own him you might never play with that player in your entire in his entire career so if you don't get mike trout then he's going to be kept by somebody else or so exorbitantly expensive that you'll never trade for him and he's gone but in this system there's a chance in two or three years that that uh, Chad decides, no, he's too expensive. I'm going to throw him back in the auction. And then I, as another player in the league, have a chance to to get him. And uh, I think that's awesome. Um, I also think it's, it's a pretty fair representation of what it, it, it's sped up from what real teams do, right? You know, the, the Nationals have Soto for a couple more years at league minimum. But it's not like one day the other teams vote and say, Soto can't be on your team anymore. Or, that the, you know, next year, Soto's a free agent. Like, over the next few years, he's going to get more and more expensive. And the Nationals could sign him to a long-term deal, which which doesn't exist here. But if they don't do that, he's just going to get more and more expensive until one day he's a free agent. And that's effectively what we've what we've tried to recreate here, what the community tried to recreate and that Niv built out. Yeah, and I think you know when you're talking about a game that uh, people are playing uh, in the in like as a hobby or for fun, like you want those things to be sped up. You don't want to be like. I have to wait eight years to even get a sniff of Mike Trout or Juan Soto or whatever. You want um, a little bit of player movement to make that stuff really fun. But, you know, at the same time, like you get to keep a lot of your team as well. Um, so I think the balance is like, I think the balance works. I, I think it works. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you mentioned uh, briefly the uh, surplus calculator and, and Justin, I want to talk to you about that. Um, can you tell me about surplus? Uh, what's, what's the surplus calculator? Yeah, I, I, I made reference earlier to that CBS um, auction keeper league that I was in before I started on Autonew. And at, back then, uh, you know, I'm a mathy guy. I'm a numbers guy. I wanted to have some sort of tool that could let me decide how good are everybody's keepers based on what I think that these players are worth in this particular league. 
And one of the things that I did was build the very, very early version of what has now become the auto new surplus calculator. And it was really just a way to say, well, if I have $70 worth of salary on $110 worth of players, how does that compare to, to the other teams and what they have? Um, and when I started playing auto new, I, I was doing the same thing. I had my own sort of private sheet, the tool that I was using to, to make those calculations. And it got to a point where I decided, you know what, this is probably something I could share that other people would have value in um, to give them a framework to sort of have those same those same decision sets. Um, and, and that's what I did. I, I released it. Um, Chad for many years was was the one providing dollar values for all the different formats and in, in when he was writing for rotographs. Um, I really used that as inspiration to, to, to use a lot of the same methods in, in creating dollar values that I included with the surplus calculator. The point of the surplus calculator was never supposed to be the dollar values, but it wouldn't do anybody any good if I didn't have any dollar values preloaded on it so that people could actually see the mechanics of everything. Um, and, and that's really how everything started is, is starting that tool. And then, um, you know, since then I've really just continued to add new features and, um, you know, uh, add add new abilities to pull things automatically. When I first started, you had to download your rosters from Autonew manually and then upload them into the tool. And now it's a simple case of, if you see here on the screen, you enter in your league number and it automatically pulls in every roster in the league. And then it, and, and basically everything populates on its own. You don't have to do anything. Um, in this case, I've got the pitcher list, the pitcher list Autonew, uh, new five by five league up. Um, and, and really it's, there's there's many different functions that people can use with the tool. In this case, this main screen is just kind of giving you an overview of what everybody's team value is. Um, there was some color coding. I mean, I'm not a graphic designer. I had some help when I was creating this tool to kind of pretty it up and make it look nicer because if it was left to me, it would just look like, you know, accountant sludge. Um, but, and a lot of it is is built on this screen to show you what, what everybody, all the team strengths look like. Um, and, but there's more than that, right? Uh, there's team rosters. You can look at your team. In this case, I've, Mark, I've got your team pulled up. You can sort your your entire team by, you want to look at the team, the players that have the most surplus per the tool. Um, you could sort this by position, by by dollar value, or by the salary of the players. Um, you know, I have a free agent listing, which I use all the time. When I'm using this, I'm using it in the season. Um, and I'm in, I'm in my leagues and I'm looking at, okay, what are the players with the most value that I'm showing as free agents? Um, what are the players that are most owned in the community across all of Autonew? I can sort by ownership percentage to see uh, which free agents, maybe I missed somebody. Maybe I have a, a $0 value on a player, but maybe that was a mistake. And I want to keep an eye on who are the guys that are, that are most owned that, I, that aren't are owned in that particular league right now. Um, and a lot of that, I think, just to speak to Niv's credit with all this is he's been so supportive in saying, what do you need to make this work better? Is there a, is there a report that I can have? Is there a backend CSV file that we can link to automatically? This stuff all is happening because he has that stuff accessible without that, this, this wouldn't work this way. Um, and that's fantastic. I mean, and he's been very supportive of, of communicating with me and saying, what, what, what else could we do? What else could we add? Um, to, to make this easier for everybody to use. So, and, and that's, that's great. I mean, I don't want you to make it sound like I'm some sort of benevolent person here. You were taking the site down pretty regularly. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't gonna mention that, but. <laughs> the first couple of years uh, that Justin started playing, he was using this tool and um, he found pretty much every bad piece of code I'd ever written. So that by, uh, <laughs> by uh, loading the rosters over and over again or, or querying for free agents. So, I mean, this kind of stuff helps the site get better and obviously is uh, a great tool to get an introduction to like how to think about um, player valuation, I think. And, and, and to back end, I, I kind of put the cart before the horse here, but to talk about what surplus is and why it's important. Um, I mean, the game of Audenew, and Niv's already mentioned a lot of it is that economic system. And part of that economic system is we're all constrained by the $400 cap. And how are you going to maximize your utility? You're the value of your players, the production that those players have. Um, and that's really what surplus represents. It's, it's having players that either are, you're getting them at a discount. So you're getting a bargain and you're creating surplus in that respect, or they're so far outperforming the price that you paid for them, uh, whether that was based on a projection or based on a market value. Um, 
those players that, that blow like Aaron judge, when he went, you know, when he really exploded and broke out, he was a, an extremely high surplus player. And if you don't have that extra surplus value on your roster, you're just not going to win. There's different ways to get it. There's different ways to acquire it. There's different ways to target surplus assets. That's kind of a whole other conversation, but in general surplus is what allows you to have a team that is better than everyone else's because otherwise everybody would have a team. We all spend $400 on our team. We all got $400 of value and it's a coin flip, a roll of the dice to see who, who finishes in first place. So, And uh, I was talking to Chad a little bit before we started this and he mentioned that, that surplus is not a new concept. It's just, a, it's numbered out here in this calculator. If we are drafting a player in the 14th round and we think he's going to perform like a seventh rounder, then we're getting surplus. That's what surplus is. And it's not a new new idea or new concept. You've just made it into a lovely table that, it, that breaks it down for every single team based on projections and the numbers they've created. Right, and, and again, the, I think the naming of the tool was really based on the primary purpose was gonna be identifying, are my keepers better than yours? And, and based on, how much surplus I have based on those keepers if I've kept $70 and they're worth 110 and also what that inflation would be. Because at a certain point in every auto new league that's in a, beyond the first year, there's gonna be inflation in general because teams are gonna keep the players that are worth more than they are currently costing them. So that drives down um, the quality of players that are left in the free agent market when you go to have your second year auction and that increases the premium that you have to pay to acquire those players. And that's draft inflation um, and knowing, having an idea of what that inflation might be helps you decide, well, maybe my $110 worth of value that I'm spending $70 on really isn't that great when everybody else has $50, they're spending on players that are worth $120. So mm -hmm. it, it's not just, well, I am creating surplus, I'm keeping guys that are worth more than, than I'm paying them. It's how you're doing that in comparison to every other team in your league. And that's what's gonna tell you do, am I going to be competitive this year? Am I, do I have a leg up as we go or, or am I middle of the pack? And that helps inform decisions, right? Because if I'm, if I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, this league, this team in this particular league, um, it's not as strong as I thought it was going to be. And I have some real competitors in here. So it might change my plan going into an auction, uh, on what kind of players I want to acquire or what sort of holes I need to fill. Um, it would inform my off season trading as well before the keeper deadline at the end of January. Um, and that's really, I mean, all of those steps are what the tool, at least the way that I use it and the way that I, I think that most people use it, um, is to inform those decisions. So, and, and another thing to be clear about too, is that I have dollar values that I preload for all the formats, but you can go in and edit. You could load your own as long as you keep it in the same column format that I have. I encourage everybody to do that. Don't use my dollar values. Use it as a baseline. I think people that are brand new to Autonew, that's... One thing that I tell them, you know, use it as a baseline. It's not the gospel, but if once you get more comfortable with what you're doing, then put in your own values and use your own values applied with this framework. Cause that was really always the intention as well as it wasn't releasing dollar values. It was releasing this framework that you could use your own values and look and see how things look based on what you think players are worth. Yeah. Um, one thing that I, I want to do in the last few minutes, and I know Nick's going to jump in at some point, but um, what I want to ask you is um, we've had the delay. The, um, the season is, is hopefully returning. Um, what, uh, what's been going on? What should we be doing as odd new owners? And then, of course, the follow-up is if you haven't joined an odd new league and you're watching and you want to, what should those people be doing? Yeah, so um, I guess right now I'll, I'll answer what people are doing right now uh, that are in auto new leagues already. And most of it is holding on and waiting. Um, obviously, we have to see if there's a season this year. I, I really think there will be, and I, I hope there will be. Um, and so a lot of the leagues, uh, I think the league, Chad, we're in sort of informally has a, a lock on transactions right now. We're not starting auctions. Uh, we've already done our auction draft. We did it on Leap Day. So we've, we've had our teams for a little while. Um, but I think we don't want to do in-season auctions, uh, nominate players for 48-hour bidding and that kind of stuff. Um, everyone's kind of holding on trades. I think part of that's an informal, like, let's not 
we don't really know how to value players, but I think also we all know each other and nobody wants to rip anybody off or like come off as disingenuous in a trade off or anything like that. So um, I think a lot of leagues are actually holding on like that, like just sort of waiting. Um, once we see a plan, I think we'll start seeing uh, strategies around the plan, uh, player usage strategies, uh, thinking about what the roster sizes are like, what the pitcher, um, what the bullpen, sorry, what bullpen usage is like, or pitchers in general are used like. And we'll start seeing a lot of movement um, based on uh, how people are valuing for just like whatever 2020 looks like, which we obviously is not going to be um, what baseball will be going forward, but it will definitely be a year this year where people can win leagues. Um, real quick, I guess if you want to join, if you're interested in what you're seeing here, um, I think we're going to probably put together once a baseball, once a season comes together, we'll put together a half season price that uh, can let people play uh, this season without having to play, play, pay for a full season. And we'll know what that is once we see when the season comes back. But uh, there's no problem with starting a league anytime. Uh, plenty of leagues have started midseason uh, when things are normal. Uh, people want to pick up a second league or, uh, you know, pick up on it a little bit late. Uh, Auto New takes a little bit of time to find the right 11 people to play with, a little bit of time to find, like, a, a, the format you want to play, understand the rules so you're comfortable with it. I don't think it's the most uh, difficult game to pick up. I think, you know, uh, I think it's it's a it's a pretty approachable version of a dynasty game, but a lot of times people take a little bit longer or don't get around to it in spring. So then they'll start a, a league in May or June, and that's totally fine. Uh, the way I think about it is you're playing for many years. You're not playing for just the next six months. Um, you know, Chad and I have been playing in the same league since 2005, and um, yeah, Justin, you've been in league since 2012, I believe. So I think. You know, if you think about it as a long-term thing, um, you, you should have no. It's it's really not hard to just pick it up, start going um, this season. A short season might be a fun way to start it out, and then really get into it um, as we get back into the normal swing of things. To get, to get super tactical, if you go to autonew.fangraphs.com, uh, you get a page like this. You can join a leagues. So these are leagues that are looking for for teams. Uh, you can create a league, which includes creating both public leagues and private leagues that other people can join or so that you can select who joins. There's also this claim a team um, where there's abandoned teams in leagues that that need new owners and you can go in and claim them. Um, depending on what you're looking for, like that claim a team is often a good way to get sort of a, an easy start in because you've got a roster to work with instead of having to build from scratch or instead of having to build a league from scratch. But those are all really good ways to, to get jump to jump in. Um, there's also a place where you can list yourself as an owner who is looking to join a league. Um, so that's just that's sort of how to how to jump in and, and do this from a real tactical standpoint. Yeah, yeah, that's totally right. Thanks for sharing that, Chad. That like so anyone can do any of that stuff anytime. Uh, generally, the way the loop works is that once you started a league, uh, the keeper deadline is January 31st. So you'll have to set your team up for the next upcoming season on that date, and uh, you can renew um, up to that date, and you'll get a whole another year of auto new we have no ads so it's uh entirely um revenue driven from what our customers pay and um obviously that's a huge number of benefits and uh really good for auto new as a business and uh also really good for you guys as customers to be able to um directly impact what i get to work on instead of having me have uh multiple multiple revenue streams that i have to care about at the same time so uh, yeah, you can sign up now. Uh, you'll be set through January. Uh, you can definitely play whatever this season looks like and then continue your league uh, going forward. Nice. Um, now, one of the things that um, I wanted to talk about, but obviously we don't have enough time, it was strategy. And I wanted to, um, especially during the off season, I wanted to give you guys some, um, pub, some pub for that. Auto, the, the Autobot podcast. Um, I thought your the most recent episode that talked about um, some of the strategy in the off season was excellent. Um, so if you're watching, if you're listening, go and listen to that, the Vibot podcast or the Autobot podcast and give that a listen because the strategy section that you guys discussed there was, I thought it was outstanding. Thanks. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, 
so what I think I'm going to do now is um, maybe open it up to some questions, maybe get Nick on to talk, maybe ask some of his questions about his league. Um, and uh, But also I wanted to, before we do that, let's, um, how can we find you, um, Justin? Uh, well, I'm on Twitter at, uh, at Justin Vibber. Um, the Autobot podcast, I, I need to find the link here. Um, the primary link for that is Autobot. That's O T T O B O T dot podbean dot com. Um, we've got a few episodes up. We're, we're, we're getting into a new recording schedule. Um, and there's going to be another episode actually up probably later today. Um, and uh, those are the primary ways. I'm also the links to public versions of the surplus calculator you can find on community.autonew.com. I always post in there uh, whenever there's new dollar values or anything like that. Um, so, yeah. That's great. And Chad? Yeah, I'm uh, Twitter at Chad Young. Uh, pretty straightforward. You can also hear me on that podcast. And uh, yeah, the Autonew community site, I know Niv talked about it at the beginning, Justin just talked about it again, but I'm, I'm on there. Um, I think I'm CHY924 on there uh, if you want to find me in there. Um, also note, I was, I've was i been clicking over to the, the live comments and there is uh, a, a lurker with the username Duberfig that is answering questions in the comments. Uh, that's that's the Jeff we mentioned way back in the beginning of this, our other high school friend who helped start us, start out, starts out. So if he's answering your questions about the economics of the game, he invented those and so it's a good source. Um, that, is so, a that is a primary source. Hey yeah. Jeff, I'm glad that you're in there. Um, yeah, if you wanna find me, uh, you know, on the community forums, community.autonew.com. I'm Niv Shah there. Uh, on Twitter, at Autonew, O-T-T-O-N-E-U. And uh, help at Autonew.com if you ever have any questions. If anyone's, like, watching this and curious and, like, uh, wants to just have a direct conversation, I answer all those emails. Nobody else sees them. So uh, feel free to send me a note, and I will try to help you out. Yeah, and uh, I'm Mark McElroy. Um, you can find me at Mark McElroy BB on Twitter if you have any questions or comments. Um, I also have a few auto news um, articles on the uh, picture list site. Um, I'm not the pro. These guys are the experts. So I'm just going through the process of learning the game and passing on my knowledge on those in those articles. So I'm trying to make it accessible so that new people can join and get involved and get some of that uh, information. Um, I'm also using the 11 other people in our league to help share ideas and talk about questions and, and, and find answers. And, and so have a look on there for that, um, some articles. Um, I'm so oh. thankful to have a chance to interview you guys and talk, talk uh, Ot New. So thank you yeah. very much for joining. Yeah, real quick, uh, I really am thankful that uh, PitcherList chose to do that this year with Autonew. Um, that was one of the coolest days for me when PitcherList rolled out that feature. Uh, I didn't see it coming. Nobody let me know that you guys are doing that. So it's like really awesome that uh, you guys sort of, uh, you know, grassroots, like you said at the very beginning of this, like picked it up, thought it was an interesting format and decided to explore it this year. I think that's really fun. And um, I'm really excited to see what you guys, uh, what you guys come up with once we get going. Yeah, I didn't want to tell you. I wanted to keep it a secret so that uh, I didn't want any special treatment. Yeah, well, yeah, okay, fair enough. I mean, I appreciate it, but yeah, it's awesome. Um, well, that was an awesome panel, I got to say, and I can't appreciate enough all of you for, for coming on talking about this. Um, I actually noticed, I meant to mention before, uh, one, um, Niv is very generous to donate a, a commission fee to uh, PitchCon, so someone will be winning that tonight, which is very exciting, and thank you for that. Um, I also noticed that at the top of the banner, you had Autonew at PitchCon uh, across Autonew, which is awesome. And really, yeah. thank you so much for that. Um, but uh, as I have you guys, and yes, you did hint at this, I'm going to be very selfish um, in that uh, this is something that I've been struggling with a little bit when it comes to Autonew, is during your drafts, how much cap room should you leave um, for the season? Like right now, I have it at 361, and I'm a lot of guys out of 400 and a lot of uh, people were going all the way to the 400 thinking like that I have that many dollars that's what I'm going to spend in this draft and I purposely left some space for some free agency pickups during the year is that smart did I do the right thing 
I think leaving some space is definitely smart, right? I mean, you don't have a separate FAAB budget or something like that, right? So if some, you know, it happens every year that some pitcher gets called up and gets real hot and all of a sudden it's like, oh, this guy's actually good. You yeah. want to be able to bid on that guy. Um, and so it's it's really valuable. I think how much you leave depends a lot on what you're trying to do. Sure. Uh, so in teams where I'm rebuilding, I'm much more likely to leave more budget because I want to be able to churn through the bottom of that roster and figure out who are those breakouts I'm going to want to keep long term. If I'm ready to compete, I don't want to leave too much on the table because the preseason auction is still where the majority of the talent is available. And you want to make sure right. you're, you're filling out your, your roster. I, I typically assume I'm going to leave somewhere between 15 and 20 bucks on the table. Okay. Um, a little bit less if I'm really competing and need to spend it a little bit more if I don't think I need it. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of different ways to cut it. I screwed up a little bit. I went a little. Uh, well, I, I, I will say that one of the beauties of Autonew and the way that that's set up is in a lot of auction leagues, if you leave any money on the table, you've screwed up. Sure. But in Autonew, you, you always have the ability to use that leftover and you can leverage that. And if everybody else in your league has gone up to $399 or $400, they're now strapped for cash and you have that cash you can trade and you know maybe not give out as big a loan in that trade mm. and leverage the free cash cap space that you have um that Great. becomes an asset just like a player is an asset so that's one of the great things about auto is even if you make a mistake and you 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 only bought 360 dollars worth of play or you know you only spent 360 dollars or whatever the case may be you can still leverage that um that available remaining cap in in a really fun way so yeah. That's a, that's a really good point. That's a really cool thing about the system you guys have built, which is just, it's just great. It's a different way of doing it. And it makes sense a lot. Uh, I think my favorite part too, I think I was telling you this, Niv. Um, I love the arbitration system. Yeah, I, it's I, awesome. It's I, really I great. It's brilliant. I think it adds another element of fun. And it's, it's something we struggle with a lot when it comes to uh, Keeper Leagues or Dynasty is just how do we end you know, how do we get players off of teams eventually? Should we? At what point do we do? And the arbitration system is just so perfect for that because there is no set rules. It's on us to dictate when people leave teams. And I struggle with it. Do you guys have any sort of tips? Like, for example, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I need pitching. So I'm going to go around and just make the, the high prices, all the pitchers that I would want in auction. So maybe it's past their cap. So they get thrown in the auction that I can have them. Or should I be saying, look, you guys, this guy had trade Turner for $3. I need to make that, you know, I need to push that price up instead. Is there a general route that you guys go? I generally try to um, get people to have to make difficult decisions with their roster. Hmm. I want to get them up to the brink. I'm not going to try to make a pitcher $80 because I don't think, I think that's an easy cut. And then, that person has a bunch of free space that they can now work with in the auction that maybe get that player back at the same price, you know? So I try to make it so that the players who are sort of surplusy um, per Justin's spreadsheet or per like the cal calculator in general, however I'm working with it are, are getting their surplus removed, but I don't want to have anybody be obvious negatives. Cause I think then, then I'm just creating another person to bid against in the auction, you know, and, I, I always try to look at least a year out. My, my thinking is I've got $25 to assign this year. I'm going to get $25 more next year. And I want to think about like, how do I put money on Niv's team? So that the money I put on his team is still bothering him two years from now. Right. <laughs> right. Because if I, if I bid up, if he's got a $40 pitcher that I bid up to 43 and he cuts the guy, those dollars I assigned him are gone. Yeah. He lost the player, but like maybe he would have cut the player anyways. I don't know. Right. Maybe he only thought that pitcher was worth 30 bucks. So I want to, I want to be in a position where, you know, two years from now, Niv's going, why is this guy so expensive? It's like, why, oh. when did this guy become $27 instead of being right. like the $6 that I had him at? Like, when did that happen? Right. Like, that's that, and, and then you're still like $27. That's not, that's <laughs> not, that's not an obvious cut. And then you now, now you're really into it, right? Like now you're making the, when, so you have to think that you're making tough choices on January 31st. You want everyone else to be making tough choices on January 31st. That's great. That's, that's super helpful. I'm sure anyone listening, especially jumping into it, that's going to be a major thing. Anyway, we have to we have to get going to the next panel. So really, thank you guys so much for being a part of this. If you don't know Auto New, you do now. Be a part of it. It's a fantastic uh, fantasy baseball game. It's like one of the best, if not the best, out there. So definitely, uh, definitely take a look into it and maybe shift your team into it. If you, if you really care about Dynasty Leagues, this might actually be the perfect fit for you. Um, so really, thank you guys so much for being part of PitchCon today. Thanks thank a you. lot, Nick. Thanks for having thank us. You. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, guys. All right. So that was that was 